Welcome back as we go island hopping in the United States Virgin Islands. We start off with a few facts about the U.S. territories, then target each island specifically, beginning with the largest, then ending with the smallest. Here we go. There are said to be 50 islands and keys that make up the territory. The majority of them are uninhabited. Out of the 50, three of the islands are often sought after. They are St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John. Each of the islands have nicknames. St. Croix is also known as the Big Island or Twin City. Big Island because it is the biggest of all the islands and Twin City due to it having the main towns of Christiansted and Frederickstead. St. Thomas is identified as Rock City and it carries its name due to its mountainous terrain. St. John is known as Love City because of its small community, homey and friendly vibe to both locals and visitors. Another interesting fact of the Virgin Islands, also known as the VI, is the drive style. Although the territory is owned by the United States, the islands have maintained the European rule of driving in addition to all passenger vehicles are also left-hand drive. This is due to them being US imported. The VI is labeled as the only location under the U.S. district that drives on the left. Now, let's make our way to the Big Island to review a fact that is only specific to St. Croix. Did you know that St. Croix was once owned by seven different countries? Today, this representation is made present day by day by the flying of seven flags seen in certain parts of the island. These countries are Denmark, Great Britain, France, Knights of Malta, the Netherlands, Spain, and currently United States. In the main town areas, one can see the preservation of the older buildings which is influenced by Danish colonial architecture going back as far as the colonization of the island by Denmark. We are now heading to the easternmost part of the United States territories included. The location is Point Udall on the east side of St. Croix. As you make your way out to that point, the change in environment is obvious. Majority of the way in, one can see many cacti, slopes and valleys along the way in in addition to the captivating seaside views. The point is represented by a sundial called the Millennium Monument and is frequented and spotted by tourists and residents of the island. For the early risers, it also makes for a great opportunity to see the first sunrise in the U.S. Heading a little bit more inland, one might see what appears to be a big satellite dish in the middle of nowhere, but hang on while I explain its significance. So there is a very long baseline array station and there are only 10 of them that stretches from Hawaii to St. Croix. On its premises is not a satellite dish but a 10 story radio telescope weighing in at 260 tons. It serves as an observatory for astronomers to measure cosmic objects in space. When necessary, all telescopes can be synced to move at the same time, all at once. If you're lucky, you can see the move in motion. Then there are times you can pass by and notice the change in direction of the telescope from the last time it was seen. Next up, we're driving all the way to the most westernmost part of the island. Let's see what we're about to find there. Depending on your seating arrangement, aside from Frederickstead Pier, the Sandy Point location is the first sight you will see while flying in. Most importantly, it is a national wildlife refuge. 
It's a bit of an off-road path to get to the destination, but the beach is pristine and worth the drive. While there, it is very important to pay attention to the posted signs throughout the refuge, as this is the home of wildlife, especially turtles. The beach is open to the general public only on weekends, for a certain time and for specific months. It is completely closed off between the months of April to September as a means to protect the turtles during nesting season. There are three types of turtles that nest there. The leatherback turtle, which weighs between 550 to 2,000 pounds. The hawksbill turtle, coming in at 95 to 105 pounds and the green turtle weighs between 200 to 500 pounds. Okay, so as we prepare to make our way over to the other island, let's make a quick detour to visit one of the oldest Barabab multi-stem tree in the Caribbean, located in Grove Place St. Croix. It is said to be planted about 250 years ago. There are other Barabab trees that are dispersed throughout the island. These trees are listed as having a lifespan of 2,000 years. Now let's catch a seaplane over to St. Thomas. We're here in the capital city of Charlotte Amali, the largest city in the United States Virgin Islands. If you're into upscale shopping, this is your spot. There's also historic points of interest such as the 99 Steps. Commonly known as 99 Steps, there's actually 103 stairs in total. It is a brick staircase positioned against a hillside that were built by the Danes in the 1700s. Although currently closed for tours, Black Bear's Castle can be seen once you ascend to the top of the Black Bear's Castle is actually a watchtower that once served as a lookout to protect the harbor and port. It was also erected by the Danes in the 1600s and was originally called Skytesport. This site is one of five national landmarks in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Now on to the next national landmark. The nation's capital is noted as being home to the second largest synagogue in the Western Hemisphere. This edifice was built in the early 1800s with renovations along the way and holds a unique trait by having white sand. So we're on our last island, which is a gem in itself. The very first fact that you will pick up on is there is no airport on the island. For that reason, we will be taking a short ferry ride for this part of the trip. The island of St. John holds great value because it is the island chosen for the country's national park. Established in 1956, the Virgin Islands National Park occupies 60% of the island totaling to about 7,000 plus acres. It is one of the most visited locations on St. John and consists of wildlife, stunning beaches, and numerous hiking trails. There is also a coral reef underwater park trail. If you are up to a bit of history, there are guided tours as well. We've covered a lot today. But I thank you for sticking around for this experience. So which one of these US Virgin Islands are you willing to visit? Maybe you are open to visiting all three. Wherever your journey takes you, just remember to stay safe. Until next time, bon voyage.